Hello fellow Mala, so for my next project after the uh, 50 BC Roman warship going 180 degrees, something totally different from that, we'll be back in my comfort zone which are airplanes, aircraft. Specifically this is the uh, Testers uh, Grumman F-14A Black Bunny uh, model. I got this off of eBay some time ago, I actually, um, this was advertised on eBay as 172nd scale kit, it was only $9.99 or $9.95 give or take. So I figured $10 for a 177 F-14 wasn't bad. And when I got it, to my surprise, it was actually an F-148 uh, scale kit by Testers. Um, so I got this kit a while ago, and I actually had started taking some parts together, as you see here. Um, so I'm not going to give you any sprue shots at the end of this. I'm just going to show you the, sh uh, the sprues here in this video. Um, and I think now, I'm, I think I'm kind of ready to do this. Um, so the next build after this is going to be Cohen's uh, Chris build, and they'll be going back into World War II, uh, doing some things which I'm also unfamiliar with, like uh, tanks, uh, which I don't have much experience with, but uh, so kind of going back and forth from the things I have experience with, things I do not. So I th like I said before in my other videos, it's good to mix it up and do different subjects, different material. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's get on. Let me just uh, show you, walk you through the... Uh, uh, instruction booklet here. Uh, so this is a tester. So I don't know, probably some of you may have built some of these in the past, and this is actually the second tester kit I've seen that I've gotten through eBay, and the instructions are pretty similar to that. Um, so opening up, uh, you know, you got some ads here for some of their other models, some little information about the Black Bunny F-14. Uh, for those of you that are not don't know familiar with the Black Bunny F-14, uh, basically that's a, a testing bed of the F-14 uh, that the Navy has. Uh, here are the decals. I'll show you those uh, a little bit. So just a quick run through here. Um, I actually like their instruction booklets. I think that they're very informative. Um, they got your uh, sprue parts here nice and laid, nice good spacing. They're all not, not tight. They're all numbered so you know what part is what. Uh, gives you some good information about you know uh, applying the decals and cementing and so forth. Um, off the bat, you gotta decide what kind of weapons you want to put on this so you can drill the proper holes for it. And there's not that many steps, I think there's eight altogether. Um, and going here through the instructions, obviously, you start using the cockpit and has all the parts numbered. And what I also like about these instructions, they got the color keys right there on the page. Um, so you can just follow along and not have to go back and forth and flip between another page or remember what whatever number stands for in the colors. Uh, so that's I think that's a good point about the, the way these instructions are written out. Again, they're nice. They're not all tied up together. they got plenty of space. Uh, and to me, anyway, they seem uh, pretty clear enough um, how they go together. Uh, and over here, then you have your uh, decal placement for the black bunny. Um, and then you got your hundreds of, it looks like hundreds of little stencils uh, for all, all uh, throughout the plane, and also for your uh, uh, weapons, which is good that it comes with decals for that as well. And then some more information here at the end. And then here's the testers' things call charts. All right, uh, take a look at, at these decals. So these are the decals that came with the kit. Um, the kit was not boxed, which just came in a plastic bag with all the sprues individually wrapped. Uh, but the decals were tucked inside the instruction books and was luckily no damage to them and they look in pretty good shape. Let me show you a close up here of these decals. So you can see there. And then you got your little famous bunny, bunny ears. Um, registration wise they all look good. Um, good color, good registration. I mean I find them pretty, even these little small ones, easy to read for the most part. So that's good. So hopefully these decals will still be viable and work very well. Alright, so that's the instructions and that's the decals. And just let me show you the kit. Now, I wasn't expecting too much out of the kit for $9, so uh, I'll take it for what it's worth. Um, as you see here, I did have previously, when I first got it, cut off some of the parts and kind of just to gauge the size and how it went together. Um, if you take a look, you see that the uh, nose section, I have it painted black. Uh, this was actually one of my test subjects that I used for when I got that uh, Rust-Oleum black uh, spray can primer. Uh, so I tried it on these plastic parts to see how well it goes. Now, and it uh, worked pretty well. I mean, I've used it and tested it out in some of the other cases, uh, other 
uh, a couple of the kits that you see me build. Now, to just to show you some of the details on here in the nose section, some of the panel details, so you can catch it there in the light. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, you got recessed panel lines, you got the vents molded there. I mean, they're not through, but uh, you know, it's a pretty good representation of the vents. You can see here around the gun and on the other side. And a little glossiness you see is just from my fingerprints there. Uh, and fit wise, from the two halves, is actually two halves and the bottom here. Um, I mean, at first glance, seems to be okay. And I'll probably have to do a bit of manhandling to get those parts nice and sh uh, well lined up, but uh, it doesn't seem so bad. Now, for the body itself, uh, this is where it kind of takes a 90 degree turn from here from these engraved details. Uh, panel lines are raised. Um, you do have the uh, recess panel lines for the uh, flaps and so forth, but all the other panel lines, these are all raised panel lines here, here in the middle. And, and these uh, those other, well, you can see the circles here, access panels, uh, these are raised. So it's kind of like half raised and half not. Uh, so it's kind of odd that, you know, you take a look at this, you're right. Maybe it's not such a bad kit, but then you take a look at this, and it's like, oh, well, it's not such a good kit. Anyway, I'll see how well the fit will be on this as I build it. But here, we just give you some more close-ups, more of the detail. Like I said, you got a combination of raised and uh, recessed panel lines there. Take a look at some of the details there in the engine, and then underneath. Now, if you take a look underneath here in the wheel wells. Uh, there's no details inside there. Um, you're looking right into the me mechanics of, of the swing wings, uh, which shouldn't be. Uh, so that's a bad part of the here. Uh, so probably what I would probably do, maybe put a uh, piece of um, sheet styrene in there and uh, maybe try and dummy up something so it doesn't look so bad in there. Um, yeah, so, well, there's a point that, like I said, for $10, I really shouldn't be so too disappointed. One thing I wish, I did wish the uh, speed brakes were uh, not molded in like they are here. I wish they were positionable. Um, so, since this is going to be the black bunny, all in black body paint, uh, it would have been nice to have these posed open so you can see the inside white and have more contrast. Uh, make it a little bit more jazzy, if you will, on the body. Uh, now, here are the uh, vertical fins, a little scratched up from the plastic, but uh, they'll buff out fine. Again, same thing. Some of the details here are raised. Others are not. So it's kind of a weird combination, you know, because of the transitional model. Um, then you've got your horizontal stabilizers, same thing. These have raised panel lines. I'm sure you can catch the light there, see them? Those are raised panel lines on both sides. Again, they get scratched up in the box, but that's no problem buffing them out. Uh, then you got your engine intakes. Yeah. And these panel lines here are recessed. The ones here inside are raised. So they're very odd the way they did it. So they couldn't decide, or maybe they took an old race kit and they just... Um, made some adjustments to it to give it some recess panel lines. And here's the nose cone. And I haven't seen too many builds of this kit. What I have heard or read is that the nose of the front section is not very accurate in this model. We'll see. I mean, just from test fitting, it looks like an F-14, so for my purposes, it is fine. Okay, so let me open up this parts bag here, show you the other parts. So these two parts through here, they apparently, from what I can tell, looks like these, this is the original factory um, seal. Alright, so there you have your two pilots, and if you take a close look, you see the two pilots are different. They're not the same uh, mold. They're ha they have different poses on them. Um, a lot of times when you get uh, kits with pilots and they have two pilots, they're just identical. Um, one is a clone of the other, exact same pose. Uh, which looks very unreal and looks very kind of funny having two guys, if you use the pilots, having the two guys sitting there with the exact same pose. But here, they have different poses for the pilot and the co-pilot, uh, uh, the guy in the back. So that looks great. So that's good. So that's a good thing. 
Uh, here you have a close up of the ejection seats. Oops, sorry, let me turn this around so you can see it. There you go. I mean, the detail is okay. It's got some, looks like, molded in straps. Um, but not the greatest, but I've seen worse. Here you have the wheels. See the details of the wheels. The other half of the wheels. Here are the engine faces there, the fan blades. Okay. And here are the engine exhausts. And you got okay detail, decent. Uh, you got your landing gear struts there. Again, detail, it's decent. Not bad. Uh, this is your front wheel well. Not much detail in there, but something. At least I have something for the front uh, as opposed to the main wheel well, which has absolutely no details whatsoever. And here's your cockpit, um, devoid of any uh, detail on them whatsoever. Uh, I guess you're supposed to use your decals for that. Um, I mean, this is something where I spend money on getting um, uh, some Edwards uh, PE for this, um, photo edge parts. Probably not, because the photo edge is going to cost more, a lot more than what the uh, I pay for the kit. So I'd rather use this as a kit just for me to practice building a F-14 and 148 scale. I have built a couple other F-14s in 172nd, and I still have a couple more in the stash. Uh, I also have a couple of 148s. Uh, F-14s, I got an F-14A Bombcat by Academy, and I got the uh, F-14D Super Tomcat by Hobby Boss in 148 scale. Which, uh, but So this gives me a good little practice run at building it th at that scale uh, before I spend my time building those more expensive kits. Okay, and lastly, or not all second to last, uh, the weapons. So this is good, that it comes with a lot of uh, weapons, so you get a nice full load. I can get, since the plane is going to be painted black, I will, you know, paint these uh, contrasting color. Uh -huh. uh, I'll have to look to see what one the plane is from. So I guess the probably will be light gray, gray, or um, even white or whitish gray um, coloring for the, miss for the missiles. Uh, the missiles, uh, detail-wise, kind of like the body. Um, you know, mainly uh, raised, combination of raised and recessed panel lines. Mostly raised panel lines for feel here. So that's, I guess it's a bit of disappointment, but again, it's, uh, it was a very inexpensive kit. Gives me a chance to, to practice building uh, this size F-14. So that's, that's a good thing. And finally, here you have the uh, canopy, which came in this staple bag. I believe the staple bag came was from the person that I bought it. I don't think it comes that way from Tester. Could be wrong. Uh, anyway, so here's the canopy. Um, it's a little scratched up, but you know, we we'll just need a little buffing. There is a very light, uh, thin seam line, looks like, going down the middle. So I'll have to buff that out. Uh, then you got your front windshield. Uh, that was probably is one of the lights here. Uh, so, yeah, so here you look. Anyway, so that's this kit. Um, so just to give you a brief over overview on it. Um, so I'll I'll be build this over the next few weeks. Um, so I'll probably keep me keep my hands busy, um, gluing and painting uh, while I wait for the Krisk build by Cohen to start. Uh, and probably continue, this probably will also continue throughout that build so I can alternate between building the little World War II and a little bit more than Jet Fighter. So go back and forth and switch it up. Alright, well, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you found this interesting or useful. Um, stay tuned. Bye right. bye. Hello, welcome back. Alright, so it's uh, about 24 or so hours after the previous segment. This is as far as I've progressed. I have started on the, kit, on the cockpit here, uh, put all the pieces together that go in here, get a close up there, uh, put a base coat of gray on, then went back, put on the decals, painted a little black, using a small bait brush uh, to focus, uh, painted the, little, um, the uh, ejection seat handles up here, uh, control stick and so forth in the seats, see how well you can see that, let me turn this around and see it better. See that? 
So I got that all prepped up. Um, I got my Rio's cockpit instrument panel all painted up and ready here. As you see. Uh, for the little green there, what I did, I, um, I put a little bit of um, silver. I actually using a silver sharpie, I colored the circle. And then I put some transparent green on it to give a little bit of more color there. And the rest you see there are the kit decals, which actually went down pretty well. Got that all painted up, ready to be used. Um, I got my pilot and Rio. Oh, getting them ready. I still have a little bit more painting to do on them before I can put them in there. Paint all the details and so forth on them. Uh, I put together the uh, fuel, external fuel tanks and the uh, A54s and the wheels. As you see here, I got all that ready. Um, for the engine intake, I started gluing in the uh, the fan blades there and uh, whatever this part is called. Um, so first, before I glue this into here, I'm going to paint the insides of the uh, of the intakes and the fan, and then I'll glue all that together. Um, the wings, I pre-painted them black uh, before I put them in there. Uh, reason being is just easier to paint them black so that I don't have to worry about uh, getting an even coat of color in here since these are swing arms. Um, you know, it's not going to be always in the same position. Um, I, there was a problem with one of the wings. Um, there was a crack and actually the piece broke. There's a little wing tip here. actually broke off. So you can get that to focus there. Oh, well, it shows up in camera. I had to glue that back and put a little putty in there. Um, but this is the underside of the wing, so it doesn't really matter too much. You're really not going to see it. Um, now, on the top part of the fuselage, uh, this part, you have these little veins, uh, which is for the F-14. Uh, when it's in um, supersonic flight and the wings are back, uh, these are supposed to pivot out to give a bit more stabilization. Um, but in real life, they did practically nothing. They were just more of a maintenance headache. So all F-14s actually have these uh, pretty much just welded shut, uh, wired shut, so they don't get used. So I'm going to do here, I'm just going to cut this part off, just snip it off. Like so, just take this and snip it. And then take this, the rest, and just glue it there in place. And block off the little slot in there. And then I'll put in the wings. And see which is which wing is wing is which. So now the wings will not activate that, or, inter or that will not interfere with the wings. Uh, that's what this little slot here is for. It was for that little piece there, so that when this pushes back, this pushes forward. Alright, so that's where I'm at and I'll be back in another 24, 48 hours with my next update on this site. Alright, thanks for watching. Hello, so about another 24 hours or so after the last little segment of this. So here I am, I put everything together here for the cockpit with the pilots. Uh, they're all in there, nice and seated. There you can take seat. They're there looking at you. Uh, glue both halves together. Um, I did have some seam fitting issues, so which is why you see a lot of the black paint is gone. Um, so they had to do a little bit of filling, a little bit of sanding here along the edges, and in the process, some of the paint rubbed off. Same thing here when I installed this bottom plate here. Um, although there's some nice, good, positive notches here when you're putting in the uh, cockpit uh, between the two outside walls. Uh, that, let's see this. Oh, you can see that in the camera. Uh, let's see, get that to focus right there. If you see this little notch here, so there's four notches one, two, three, four, and uh, so that's pretty positive in there. Uh, but the bottom plate here, the only thing holding the bottom plate here in place are these little notches here. If you can see this little piece of what looks like almost like a sprue gate that you would clip off, uh, there's another two corresponding on the other end. And that is how this bottom plate is aligned uh, to the two uh, nose halves. Um, so that's not very much a positive, a very positive um, attachment point, but I mean, it is doable. Um, so I did have to put a little bit of filler here along the edges here and sand this area down. Um, before I sand down, like I usually do, I put some painter's tape um, to protect the details around it, and then I sand it down as close as possible. Over here, you can probably see a little bit more of the filler. 
Uh, this is having problems focusing. There you go. You see a little bit of the white filler that I needed there. Uh, a little bit of filler here near the weir well. Uh, filler here, a little bit here by the nose area. And one thing about this kit that I did not realize is that it has uh, pieces, parts for uh, radar. The nose radar that you see there. Um, which mentions here, but also mentions along the same breath uh, to go ahead and glue the nose uh, onto the front. Unfortunately, there is no way to pose this open. There's no uh, latch or, uh, you know, something else. I mean, you can always scratch build something, I guess, if you want to keep this open. But I just put it in there, just put it in there. I mean, I'm going to seal this up uh, so you're not even going to see it. Uh, so my next step with this, I'll go ahead and put it on the nose cone. Uh, and finish up the uh, the cockpit here. Uh, you have your canopy frame that's going to go here, and then you have your canopy here, uh, which I polished up a little bit of to me a polishing compound, and that'll go there along the front windshield, uh, and then mask this off, the canopy off, and then this will be ready as one unit to attach to the rest of the body. So this basically is just going to go ahead and slide right in here and then you gotta glue it in. Um, if you see right there there's quite a gap there uh, from this little test fitting there at the bottom too so I'm gonna do a little, need to do a little finagling to get that in there. Um, as far as the top and bottom I have here um, when I glue everything else it needs some filler. Um, if you take a look where we see white here uh, that's filler that's been sanded down along that edge along the wing root here. You see white there, a little bit here along the edges for the uh, engine intakes along the engine intakes in here. I see a little white filler. I uh, see I put that plastic card to cover up that gaping hole that was there uh, for the wheel well. Uh, and that was, that's basically it as far as filler for these two halves. Um, I already put in the uh, launch rails here. Um, and then once I put in the front, make sure all that's well um, puttied and sanded it down then I'll put the launch rails for the front which overlap the back and front hold everything together um, and at that stage after I'm done this is good then I'll attach the vertical stabilizers here I'm not going to attach them down just because this makes it a lot easier to handle as such while I'm putting this on and then I'll put that on uh, once that's attached then I'll attach the bottom fins the bottom stabilizer fins that go here and any other, and also probably the fuel tanks. Um, so all that's going to be painted black. Uh, before I paint it black, I'm probably going to paint the wheel wells white, mask that off, and then uh, do the black. I'm going to paint the black same way I did through the wings. It's going to be that Rust-Oleum black primer. And on it, well, you can see in the camera here before it was really matte. This has a slight little uh, sheen to it. Uh, that's because I then once it was dried, I sprayed it with some satin Rust-Oleum as well to protect it. And I'm probably going to do that for the whole aircraft. And then I'll come back and I'll paint the engines and any other little pieces that needs to be painted. Um, and I'll be pretty well on the way for decali, at least for the main plane. Uh, then I still got to do the wheels and the misses and all that stuff has to be painted and, uh, and decal as well, decal. Well, uh, so that will take a little while longer. Anyway, so that's my update for this. Stay tuned for the next part. All right, thank you.